All right, we are back on Business AF Live and my smartwatch is going off. So um, that means it's ready to go. And we have a special guest with us. Happy New Year to everyone. I will introduce her in a little bit. Um, but before we get started, uh, my co-host is in another meeting. So hopefully he will come and join us. He'll be here later on. Um, and we will get to talking about all things business with our first guest of 2020. Yay! And Yay, happy new year. Um, so we are streaming now, right now, LinkedIn Live as well as YouTube. And this is Business AF Podcast, live show, whatever you want to call it. And um, this today we have Seppi, the Director of Global Accounts with Elevated Marketing Solutions, right? Oh, I forget. I'm sorry. You can introduce yourself. I really apologize. I got the Director of Global Accounts and that was really what stuck with me. I want to talk to you about that. So go ahead, introduce yourself, tell us what you're about and uh, give us a little background on what you do. Um, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. And I'm so, so very excited to be the first guest in 2020. 2020 is a very, very special year to my heart. A lot of changes, new decade, fresh start, resetting. And uh, my name is Sapide Ivazi. I am. Uh, I live in LA, Los Angeles, California. Uh, I used to live in Las Vegas. I lived there for about 13 years, and I work for this amazing company that's called Elevated Meeting Solutions. I'm an event planner and truly enjoying what I do. Um, I'm sure we would dive into my background and all the things mm -hmm. that I've done. Uh, but truly an, an honor to be here and thank you for having me and i'm excited to share all my experiences and my stories and my wisdoms and share that with your you know your yeah. listeners and audience yeah thank you for uh joining us i know it took us a while to get linked up and you know with the uh, entrepreneur life it can sometimes happen that way um so uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about what you do now as the director of global accounts and what does that involve? Um, I do know a little bit, I did some research, but I'd like for you to explain it in, in your words and, and tell us what you do. Of course. Um, so my background, I like I mentioned, I grew up, I started my career in Las Vegas. Um, I worked at Bellagio as a convention services manager. And as a convention services manager, we operate on all these accounts, programs. Um, and when I say accounts, like groups, like for example, when you go to conferences like Expedia, or if you go to Amazon or any inspirational conferences. So we manage all these accounts from A to Z, and we had the capacity to provide outstanding services for them. Um, I am very fortunate to be a part of, um, you know, the Vegas. The Vegas has a huge, huge um, impact in my life. Uh, I learned the hospitality industry in Las Vegas, which is outstanding. You know, we. Mm -hmm. I learned. I got trained in those uh, luxury properties, and I had the opportunity to learn the industry and the customer service in a very high level. Uh, the majority of the clients that I had, they were all VIPs, very top accounts. And from that point on, I transferred from, MGM, at, from Bellagio to MGM Grand, and mm -hmm. I was selling conventions and booking business um, at MGM Grand. It was a huge, incredible uh, journey for me, just learning and understanding the concept of hospitality and how we provide that level of service for the customers and then so just how to book business and then how to appreciate the customers and how to maintain those relationships how to keep momentum going and understand the needs demand what's trending in the market what are the expectations and all these great things so after working in the industry for 10 plus years i decided to uh, shift a little bit still staying in the industry and um I am working actually with my former executive director at Bellagio and we um, and the company is called Elevated Meeting Solutions. We're in, independent meeting planners and we book corporate accounts. Mm -hmm. So my role um, as a director of global accounts, I um, 
book and I find the account and then I find and I negotiate the contracts for all my customers, making sure that all these policies and procedures are in place. I set them up for success where we can save up money for them in regards of food and beverage, production, speakers. And then also that's like the one portion of our company that we um, provide those kind of services in regards of like booking and mm-hmm. Venues for them. So let's say Amazon want to book, it, book an account in San Diego, or they want to do it in abroad, like in Brazil. Like we have access to all the venues all over the world and mm-hmm. in the U.S., and we have the capacity to find the right venue for them, find the right hotel for them, and mm-hmm. also negotiate all these contract um, terminologies. And right. once the contract is signed we have the capacity our company has uh, has the capacity to uh provide event planning services and operate their events for them in regards of like managing their vips uh you know amenities conferences like Mm -hmm. food and beverage av production all all above and it has been an incredible journey because a lot of our customers they are our family you know this Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we live, we work. I always say that we work in a human psychology business. You know, business is all about relationship and trust. And I'm very mm-hmm. fortunate that I work with incredible team, that they are my work family. And then also my customers and my clients, uh, they are my family because I have a history of working with them. And we have been able to establish a very close relationship and trust. And mm-hmm job is to protect their trust and make sure that they're in good hands yeah um that that's amazing thank you for that breakdown we um i mean i know that you have a lot of experience in the hospitality business you know based on your you know bellagio and mgm experience um it sounds to me that um you know your experience now is like you're booking all these big events and i think what my my question is is what is the first like when someone wants to do a conference, like how do they, how do you approach that situation? Can you kind of walk through like that process? Like, you know, someone that maybe want to, maybe wants to do a conference, like where do you go? You know, is it a vision that they have? Do you work with them on their vision or is it a matter of, hey, I have this conference already set up. Um, Are you doing any of that and coaching them on their event at all before the signing contract? Right. So mm-hmm. normally when our clients, we're like a uh, consultant. So they come mm-hmm. to us and they say, we have this vision. We want to conduct a conference, for example, for 2,000 people, 200 people, 50 people. Mm-hmm. The number doesn't really matter in our content. And mm-hmm. um, we ask about their vision. What are you trying to achieve in your conference? Is that going to mm-hmm. be a training, educational kind of conference? Is that going to be an inspir- in, you're in, trying to inspire people and you know gathering all these people is that going to be a retreat is it a corporate accounts like there's so many different is that a sport um conference is it pharmaceutical there's so many different segments right. in convention industry that we do our homework and we have those candid open conversations with our mm-hmm. clients just to make sure that we understand their vision we're on the same page with them and we see what they see at the end of the day our job is to deliver paint the image for them and deliver their expectations so yeah. once they let us know that what their expectations are and then we dive into like which which city they're planning to have their event. You know, there are some people they prefer to keep their event in within their city. They don't mm-hmm. want other attendees to travel. Some they they decide to just you know have their attendee to travel from point A to point B. So it all mm-hmm. depends on like what the expectations are and what kind of event they want to hold and what they want to um, what would be, what they want to accomplish at the end. Mm-hmm. What would be the end result basically. Yeah. So, on those information we start designing their events for them okay. and obviously their budget is always important you know like what right. you want. and um we have like i said we have the capacity and we have the ability to have access to all these different properties and these all these mm-hmm. Venues, so we're always able to customize based on their needs we never say no to our customers that's one of the biggest things for us mm-hmm. um, important for us to be able to um, give them this uh, opportunity and environment that they can trust us and we have the capacity to uh, provide uh, those information based on their needs, based on their budget, based mm-hmm. on 
their, you know, their attendees. And, you know, each customer they have, you can have the same program and have two different people working on that and the expectations would be totally different. And as a planner, that is my role to ensure that I am um, understanding their expectations and I am on the same wavelength with them to provide those um, services for them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the, you know, the key word that you're talking about is like, expectations and re relationships like i feel that that is what's needed in business it's not you're not always going to get you know what you may expect or if they're not clear on their expectations then sometimes you know it ends up being a bad uh business relationship <laughs> they, they don't like your services because they expected certain things but um i definitely think that that's something that is very key especially when you're providing a service um so I have a question, um, have you, as the expert in this, you know, planning events and organizing and all of that, knowing venues, have you ever had an instance where someone came to you with this like huge vision and you coached them into like something that was more like uh, intimate and more, you know, like a, a retreat versus a conference? Like, can you explain maybe a, an instance where that happened? It happens all the time. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, I want to have like Gary Vee and all these speakers and stuff like that. And then they have the budget or they have the budget. Again, um, as I mentioned, trust is a very key player in this business, mm -hmm. in any yeah. business, but in our business, it's all about trust. I mean, mm -hmm. we have a track record of being in the industry long enough to know the industry and we mm -hmm. have performed in a very high level. We have worked with um, companies that they are well known. And um, one of the reasons that people choose us as a company and consult with us is because of our experiences. Mm -hmm. and for me, uh, when they come to me, one of like the first things that I mentioned to my clients is I am going to be candid and honest with you. And I treat you like my family. I would tell mm -hmm. you the exact same thing that I tell my family members. Mm -hmm normally appreciate that they uh, appreciate the fact that you know they people want to hear honesty and mm -hmm. if there would be a situation that the expectations and the reality they're too far out and that is my role to just help them to uh, see the new reality and meet them in the middle just to make sure that we're not um, completely disregarding what they wanted to accomplish however we designed the program in a way that they feel fulfilled at the end. So yes, of course, it happens very often mm -hmm. and tailored to their expectations, but we make some tweaks here and there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I can, I mean, I think it's it's a dream of a lot of people that work on their own. They wanna host a conference, they wanna bring their tribe together. Um, but I think, you know, they have sometimes too high expectations or not enough preparation, you know, not the experts to help them out. Um, so I want to backtrack a little bit on your entrepreneurship journey and like now living in LA. Um, when did you realize that that this was like you needed to make the jump from corporate to like working in like a different style, um, you know, business? I mean, it's still business, but it's different, right? Like you have to manage your schedule and all of that. Like when did you realize that was the the need you needed, the jump you needed to make? So I love that question because mm -hmm. I can tell you my life story. <laughs> I am an independent thinker. And uh, from day one, when I walked into that property, because um, when I started working at Bellagio, I started the convention industry from the bottom. I did not know the industry. I had no idea what convention was. And from day one, I knew that I would work for myself one day. And mm -hmm. that was a learning process for me. That's why I did operation. And that's why I switched from operation to sales, because in regards of like running a business, you need to have the, you need to understand both sides. Right. So when I um, felt like that, that was the right time for me. I gained enough experience. Um, when I was in operation, I was the employee of the month at Bellagio. I was finalist for employee of the year at Bellagio. I worked really, really hard uh, to learn the industry, to understand the service level and do whatever I can to mm -hmm. exceed those expectations and 
when I switched from operation to sales, the very last year when I left the new brand, my goal was $2.4 million and I closed at 165% of my goal. I learned the contracts, I learned networking relationships, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I was ready. I was ready. I did all these, all, the past 10 years, when 10 plus years when I was in the industry, I've been just absorbing all these informations. I was mm -hmm. just, my goal and my focus was all about learning and growing. Mm -hmm. And when I um, decided to become an independent planner and also working with the team that I have worked with them in the past, mm -hmm. I have a, I had a very positive experience working with them when I, because um, to all my partners, they both worked at Bellagio with me. So mm -hmm. I worked with them in the past and I trusted them and they had the exact same vision that mm -hmm. I did. And it led me to a place that I decided to join Elevated Meeting Solutions and um, just exploring myself on a different level and seeing mm -hmm. a different dynamic. I, I have that kind of personality. I have a very strong personality i'm a go-getter i love challenges i don't like to sit stagnant i don't like a nine-to-five job i like to create things and you mm -hmm. know the journey of being independent and finding yourself in places that you've never been before finding yourself in places that you don't have a steady paycheck finding yourself mm -hmm. that you feel uncomfortable and you're living outside of your comfort zone constantly and questioning yeah. yourself these are, um, I would say, this is who I am. I migrated from Iran when I was 20 years old with my younger sister. And I always had this fire in my belly that I'm going to just keep going. I'm going to just put myself in uncomfortable situations and learn and grow and keep moving forward. And not mm -hmm. so for me, it was just natural. You know, I. Mm -hmm thrive on that you know this is my um my passion the mm -hmm. hospitality is my passion so i know i'm just investing my time and energy in the right field mm -hmm. and also the drive that i've always had the hunger to learn and grow uh and just seeing myself in a different dynamic and see how much i can expand it's just mm -hmm. incredible the past year has been one of the most challenging, yet one of the best, best years of my life. I have expanded in a way that I've never seen myself in the past 34 years of my life. I have been in places that I'm like, oh my God, I'm not gonna make it. And I've seen myself on the very top that I'm like, wow, I can't believe this. And yeah. this journey, as you know, it has ups and downs, it has highs and lows. And for all the people out there who are fighting every single day, they wake up, they show up for themselves and they believe in their dreams, I admire them. I admire them for their courage. I admire them for the resilient. I admire them for not giving up. It's not easy. It, it really mm -hmm. isn't. And um, there's a perception out there that people think, oh, you know, you're a business owner, so you make a lot of money. You have your own business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's not always about the money. Uh, money is only a tool to get you from point N to point B. Money is something that it brings more comfort to your life and it gives you the freedom to explore life in different ways. But in reality, this journey for me has been a lot of, it brought a lot of self-awareness and self. I, I had to explore myself in areas that I didn't feel comfortable. And I had mm -hmm. to look at those situations to see who I truly am and who I want to become. And just... Mm -hmm. Knowing that who I want to become, it just excites me. That's like the blood flow in my body every single day when I wake up and I jump out of the bed and I mm -hmm. start my day because the person who's going to, who I, I am going to become mm -hmm. is this person is working towards that person every right. day. And that excitement, it just keeps me going. And, mm -hmm. and I am very proud of all the other people like me who are out there and they're doing the same thing and it's not easy but we're growing all together mm -hmm. yeah i definitely can attest to that i've been there and uh it's even when there's a setback to me it's growth 
because you have to take something from that. Um, so you talk about, you know, getting up in the morning and that's what drives you and you're always going, going, going. Um, what type of tasks or anything that you put in place day to day to keep yourself like in line and, and be disciplined about what you're doing? So I created this lifestyle for myself. First of all, I work out every single day. That is very vital to me. It's very rare that I miss my workout unless I'm traveling or I have a meeting and my timing is not working. Mm -hmm. And um, I wake up at five o'clock in the morning uh, for about 30 minutes. I meditate and I write my journal. I set my intentions for the day that what I would like to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And then I start up my day. You know, I believe that it's important to take care of yourself throughout this. This is a journey. There's no ending to this process, you know. So maintaining that mental and physical balance is very mm -hmm. vital. Um, you know, people have different approaches in regards of taking care of their body. I do celery juice every morning. But... Uh, then I start working, like I set my intentions, I have a list of the things that I need to do. And also I set myself for success. I don't create the list in regards of like setting unrealistic expectations. At the end of the day, I feel like, you know, I wasn't able to accomplish ABC. However, it's important for me that it would be um, realistic and achievable. And once the day ends, I sit and review the list just to ensure that where I missed, what uh, you know, I succeeded, what I need to do for tomorrow, and just writing about it. You know, I journal mm -hmm. every single night about the things that I'm grateful for. Um, there's always something that we can be grateful for. It can be a conversation with somebody. It can be an article that you read. It can be simple things in life, just having food on your table, just having a shelter. Mm -hmm over your head, having warm water. I mean, it, it's small things, they can make an impact. And there are days that you don't feel it, you know? You're, right. There are days that you don't even care about it because you don't understand the value of all these things that you have. But mm -hmm. just practicing, practicing gratitude is very important. It plays a major role in my life. Um, it helps me to stay grounded. Mm -hmm. It allows me to appreciate life in a different way, just not having expectations, 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 because okay. sometimes you just need to be, you don't have to do, sometimes you just need to be. Right, oh yeah, I definitely resonate with that. I think it's, um, I think one of the things that really helps me, and I don't know if you've done this, but like trying not to compare yourself with someone else's success, like, or, failure, whatever it is, like you need to create your own journey because your chapter one, it may be, or your chapter 10 might be someone else's chapter 25 or something like that. And I think it's really easy to get lost, especially when you're um, an entrepreneur and doing all the things by yourself, essentially. Um, so, you know, you talked a lot about uh, one thing you mentioned about, um, relationships and kind of like being in the human psychology business because you kind of have to read people and stuff. Um, I want to know, like, you know, have you ever uh, encountered a situation where there was someone you worked with that didn't mesh with you and you had to make that difficult decision to move on from them? Of course. Mm -hmm. um, it's not only working, it's in your friendship. It, there are family members that you feel mm -hmm about them i think this is life you know we are not all uh basically built to connect with everyone we can right. know anyone who can say i love everybody and everybody loves me we have differences mm -hmm. but i feel like that what's important what's very important in this process is acceptance we're not all the same we mm -hmm. don't come from the same background and we don't believe in the same 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 things. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have the same dreams. We're not looking for the same thing in life. There are people like, for example, my personality, I would use myself as an example, can be too much for some certain people. Mm -hmm. I have enough self-awareness about myself knowing that I can be too much for some other people. Does it mean that I'm going to change? No. This is no. who I am. I know who I am. 
And as long as I'm not harming or damaging people and I'm not causing pain for other people, I don't see um, I don't see any reason for me to change. But there's always room for improvement. There's always right. room to be better. And um, when I find myself in those positions, I always, the first question is like a self-reflection on me that why am I not able to connect with this person? What am I projecting on this person that I'm not able to connect with? And who do I see that person? Am I seeing this self-image that they are trying to show me? Or is it something behind this that I need to come and visit the situation with more compassion and empathy? to understand that we all are going through this life with some sort of pain and we're mm -hmm. all trying to mask it in different shape or form. Some people have more self-awareness and they know themselves and they know their strengths and weaknesses. So they're able to manage themselves in those situations in a different manner. But mm -hmm. I don't take it personally. I don't think that uh, that is my job to tell people how they need to live their lives. Right. It's of acceptance and then also there are times in life that you need to say no to people there are times in life that mm -hmm. we see that it's causing you a negative impact then that's where you need to stand up for yourself and set your boundaries and mm -hmm. say no to them because um, not because that they're good or bad it's just like the matter of like understanding where you stand and where you want to go and people some people they just are comfortable where they are you know and there are people like and there are people that they want to just live differently. And right. I never put myself in a position to judge them. I just look at them as they're indifferences. They're indifferent. Mm -hmm. They travel mm -hmm. enough in, in the world. And I've been in so many different countries. And the more you travel, at the end of the day, we have our similarities are way more than our indifferences. We right. are all trying to do our best in this life mm -hmm. we only have and we we thrive based on the tools that we have mm -hmm. so right. if anyone for whatever reason i feel like that they have those uh, challenge i have those challenges with them it's not my job to judge them i just understand the fact that at the end of the day my tools are not the same as the tools that they have and yeah. I respect that and I just let it go basically yeah yeah I think that you know the acceptance is the key just accepting whatever it is so um just switching back a little bit into like your work um life I want to uh, talk a little just one question about um events and conferences and you know talking about self-awareness and like you know this movement of mental health and making sure that people are you know healthy uh mentally not just physically uh when it when they come to these events do you see any trends um in conferences or events that include a mental health you know event or like room or anything are you seeing any of that um in some of the events that you're planning recently i'm sorry i lost your question so oh. So like, you know how like mental health is very important and a lot of people are talking about it, feeling more comfortable. Are you seeing trends in events that you plan that are catered towards this aspect? Like not just the education and training and the fun and the party, but like also that side. I love this question. It's You asked really great questions. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So one of the trends in convention industry that we are witnessing that recently is health and wellness it has become really really big actually i have booked multiple accounts that it was all retreats in costa rica mm -hmm. um, we're booking one in thailand in bali like people are very engaged in that level of like you know maintaining a better <laughs> lifestyle you know eating healthier putting themselves in these positions or environments to pro to learn new skills and new tools to be able to maintain a healthier lifestyle and mental um wellness mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that it's very important in our industry because people travel quite often so that would distract their lifestyle so if somebody is going to the gym every day because they go mm -hmm. to 
conferences and they party at night, they drink, they eat like unhealthy. So there's a distraction. And one of the things that a lot of hotels are providing the services of health and wellness, they're um, actually changing menus, bringing like organic Mm -hmm. plant-based options, providing options for people to maintain that lifestyle as they're traveling to be able to, (coughs) excuse me, to be able to continue that kind of lifestyle. So it's very important to see that for me. Um, it's a matter of like seeing the trend and just the matter of like seeing that people are continuing believing in that lifestyle. You know, it's not mm-hmm. only at home. When you travel, you want to keep maintaining that lifestyle because you believe that this is who you are and right. you don't want to take that for granted. I travel personally a lot for business also and pleasure. However, when I travel, that's another thing, you know just being able to maintain that lifestyle, just putting myself like, you know, in the gym, even like for 30 to 45 minutes, just keep the body moving. And also I am booking and seeing more um, desire for all these groups coming to us and wanting us to book different retreats for them and just being uh, part of that health and wellness um, segment. Right. Yeah, I definitely can see that in the past couple of conferences that I've been at. And it's really important. I think, you know, you mentioned going to all the, conf- you know, all the sessions and then going partying and then not sleeping and your whole routine is like thrown off. So I can definitely see how that is integrated into these events, especially when they're week long. Um, so thank you for joining me. Um, we do have a, a uh, one random question that we ask before we wrap, you know, wrap up. Um, and it is, if you can sit down with anyone one-on-one for lunch, who would that be and why? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, sorry, I lost oh. Oh, I said if you could sit down with for lunch with anyone one on one, who would that be and why? Maya Angelo. Okay, that's good. It's a good answer. Maya Angelo, she has a very, very, very special place in my heart. Mm-hmm. I listen to her actually weekly. To her, she has a lot of wisdom to share about life, about love, about progress, about humanity Mm -hmm. and um she is very powerful she's very strong yet she's very gentle and she's very humble she's a combination of um and that's another thing like in 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 our society when a woman is strong she's always labeled with exactly Mm -hmm. the b word (laughs) The B word. (laughs) And there's a stigma when it comes to strong women. There's a stigma when it comes to women that they are independent and they're conducting their lives in a different level and they set the bar so high. And Mm -hmm. um, Maya Angelou is a great example of being strong yet being gentle, yet teaching us how to maintain the balance between the strength and also gentleness mm-hmm. so she is she's the one that's a that's a really good answer and uh i get that question sometimes and i'm like you know i go to certain people but that's a good one to add to the list i guess i, I mean more than one person but um so yeah if people want to connect with you they can go um to your website at elevated me oops sorry uh elevatedmeetings.com um they can connect with you on instagram I'll just put your website up here. Um, they can connect with you on the Instagram, and you're probably on LinkedIn and all the all the platforms. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. You're amazing. Thank you. I'm happy to be here and share my story, and I wish you well. Thank you. We had I had a great time. Thank you for all your insight, and uh, I'll definitely keep you in mind if I hear about anyone wanting to plan a huge event. So. Thank you. Thank you.